Segment 3, Motions of Stars on the Sky. We spoke in the last segment about coordinate systems for defining the positions, the fixed positions of stars on the celestial sphere in terms of their right ascension and declination, uh, two coordinates that basically determine your position on the sphere. And these positions for the stars are fixed in the celestial coordinate system. But of course, we're not in the celestial coordinate system. We're sitting on the surface of the Earth, and the Earth is turning. And this, in our local coordinate system, we want to understand how the stars will appear to move as the Earth turns. So let's look at this from a point on the Earth's surface. Our zenith, the position directly overhead, and the opposite position are defined by where we're standing. But the celestial sphere is laid out by the celestial pole, which is the projection of the North Pole of the Earth out to infinity, and the celestial equator, which is the projection of the Earth's equator out to infinity. And as we said before, the North Celestial Pole from your position will be as high above the northern horizon as your current latitude. So what we have is a system where we're sitting on the surface of the Earth. The Earth is turning, and the sun rises in the east and sets in the west because the Earth, the Earth rotates from west to east. The stars are out at night because it's dark. Actually, the, star, the whole celestial sphere is present at, at, at all times, but the part we see is the side uh, on the night side because that's where the sun is not shining and scattering light off the sky that makes it impossible for us to see the stars. In fact, with a very large telescope, you can see bright stars in the daytime. If you go out with a 60-inch telescope, and I've done this, you can and look at the brightest stars in the sky, just point the telescope at them, and they're there still. I can promise you that. So let's look at a few key positions on the Earth and try to understand the motion of the stars at those positions. Probably the easiest position to start at is at the North Pole. They're cold, of course, but it's a, an easy position to start at. You're at latitude plus 90 at that point. The North Celestial Pole is directly overhead. And again, the Earth is spinning from west to east, and that makes the celestial sphere appear to rotate from east to west. As you look at the North pole, the North Celestial Pole, it stays fixed, but the stars circle around it once every 24 hours as the Earth turns, because the Earth is just rotating underneath it. So a star that's at, at uh, declination plus 45 is halfway between the zenith and the horizon. It makes a full circle every 24 hours, staying exactly 45 degrees above the horizon. A star on the celestial equator will have itself just exactly on the horizon and as it it makes that full circle it'll just barely be visible to you on the very horizon as you march south from here things start to change when we get to say 60 degrees north latitude the north celestial pole is now only 60 degrees above the north horizon the stars continue to make circles about that point but they don't stay at the same altitude anymore so here in this picture we see what happens. Stars make 1 24th of a cir full circle every hour. That's 15 degrees along that circle that they make around the North Star. This is what lets you use the stars as a clock. If you know the sky very well, you can watch the positions of the stars and you can essentially use them to keep time because you know they take 24 hours to go around the sky. Now, as long as the full circle is above the horizon, you can uh, you can follow the stars at any time of the year through their whole pass pathage, passage. Those are called circumpolar stars. And the number of circumpolar stars will differ. Of course, at the North Pole, the whole northern hemisphere of the sky is visible to you all the time, and all the stars are circumpolar. As you get close to the equator, fewer and fewer stars are, only those that are immediately around the North Star. So here we have a few of the constellations that are very far north, therefore uh, circumpolar constellations like Cassiopeia and Ursa Minor and Cepheus, and you see these constellations in our northern sky either above or below the North Star, depending upon the time of night and the season, making their circle around the North Star through the night. So at our latitude at about plus 30, the North Star is only 30 degrees above the North Horizon, so only stars that are within 30 degrees of the North Celestial Pole will be circumpolar will stay above the horizon at all times. Other ones will rise and set. The, far, the closer they are to the North Star, the farther north uh, of east they rise and the farther north of west they set. 
and on the celestial equator, objects will rise due east and set due west. And here in Austin, they'll get to an altitude above the southern horizon of 59 degrees. So here, we're looking off to the east, and we see uh, constellations that are close to the equator. They don't rise straight up because they're going to have to go along an arc that only goes up to 59 degrees. They rise at an angle from the due east, and they rise up to 59 degrees, and they set at an angle from due west <coughs> at the other end. Excuse me. Here is a more southern constellation. It will rise south of east and set south of west, rising only to a modest uh, altitude above the southern horizon during the course of the night. So how is this picture taken? This is a this is a, a, an image looking off to the southeast. You can tell by the angle that the stars are making with the horizon, and the stars are rising at, at, along their arcs to set in the southwest. It's a time exposure, so you're seeing the motion of the stars along the picture during the course of the night. Now, when you get to the celestial equator, you're at a, an, and when you get to the Earth's equator, you're at a, a, another special position. And here, the North Pole's on the North horizon, the South Celestial Pole's on the South horizon. The celestial equator is due east and due west of you. It goes to straight overhead. So a star on the celestial equator will rise straight out of the east and set straight into the west, getting to the zenith uh, halfway in between. And the whole course of the arc is half of the total arc of the star across the sky is 12 hours long. Now, I mentioned before that, that there was an exception to, the, to this con considering that the stars are fixed on the sky. It turns out that the Earth has a secondary motion. It turns once a day on its axis, but once every 25,000 years, that axis wobbles around an arc along the sky that's 23 degrees across the inclination of the Earth. Uh, it takes 25,000 years to do this procession. This is analogous to a top processing as it as it gets slower due to the torque on the on the top and so the the earth's pole is processing quite slowly once every 25,000 years and this has an effect to alternate the, the coordinate system with time and you can see in this illustration where the north celestial pole has been and where it will be over time right now it's pointed almost to the, towards the star polaris about 14,000 AD in about 12,000 years it'll be close to the star Vega which is very far from the the uh, north celestial pole right now so the coordinate system changes with time with your the human eye this is essentially n a non-issue the stars are in the same place all the time when we want to go with a very precise telescope though we have to have mathematical corrections that are made with a computer program to correct for this procession of the earth uh, at a very fine level. 